Hi, in this video, I'll show you how you can import Copernicus Sentinel-2 satellite data and import it in QGIS, filter it by some sort of temporal and spatial parameters and display it in a QGIS. And one thing is you also need to do um, cloud masking or cloud filtering. I'll show you all this in this video. Let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is just import the Earth Engine plugin in a QGIS. I've already um, installed it. If you have not done so, please do that by just going pl plugins and then um, manage and install plugins. Um, the next thing is just you load your script uh, using the Python um, code editor. Um, then uh, to start, I'll import um, import EE means I'll import the Earth Engine uh, library and also the map library associated with the Earth Engine plugin. Um, because it's a global data, I'll um, select, I'll import the um, countries database, which <clears throat> this uh, contains actually the um, administrative boundary for all countries around the world. Um, specifically uh, for this example, I'll use Uganda a shape file as an example. <clears throat> And then as you can see here, I'll filter by Uganda name, and then that will give me the shape file for a country called Uganda in, 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 in East Africa, all right? And the next thing that I need to do is just import my um, Sentinel satellite um, image, Sentinel to satellite image. Uh, here's the image collection ID. Um, I'll grab that and because this is a, a large um, time series data, and also um, contains a global coverage. I'll filter it by date uh, by defining um, here the fi dot filter date will just filter it by any date that you specify. In this case, for example, I filtered it by um, 2019. That means I just ask it uh, to give me only uh, data from January 1st to December 31st of 2019. And the next thing that I need to filter is um, actually um, cloud coverage. Uh, because the Sentinel satellite image as a metadata has cloud information, so I'll filter it by a percentage of cloud um, or cloudy pixel percentage. That means for each pixel, it will provide the percentage of cloud contamination. So in this case, what I'm filtering is um, I'm I'm giving a parameter that asks, okay, filter anything or just give me anything that has less than 20% cloud contamination, all right? So, and the last filter parameter is, as I mentioned earlier, this is a global data. It's a large data to display here. So I'll filter by um, location, in this case, Uganda. So anything that loads will be um, 2019 and 20% cloud contamination and also Uganda. Okay, now you imported your um, image, your Earth, your Sentinel image. To display it, um, you need to define some visualization parameter. In this case, um, I, I name it RGB visualization because it's a true color composite that I'm doing and also define the minimum and maximum values in uh, of this um, uh, surface reflectance bands and also um, specify the different bands that I'll be using to display. Um, this is a true color composite, so I'll uh, choose band four, three, and two of the um, Sentinel uh, band, you know, satellite bands, and then display the um, Sentinel uh, image here. So because I have an entire year image 2019 every two weeks, that's a lot of data, right? So to display here, instead of uh, displaying all the images in this image collection, I'll select uh, or just calculate a median statistics for each pixel. What it gives me here is that it calculates the median of, um, for each pixel, it calculates the median uh, within the entire um, um, time series, right? So instead of, um, you know, large number of um, images, I'll have a single image that contains the median value for each pixel um, of this time series for 2019. And here, I'll also import the visualization parameter. I already defined um, um, 
a visualization parameter here. I'll call that here. And lastly, I'll um, give it a name. As, um, when it displays it here on the table of content, I can see this name, right? Um, and also, you know, for clarity, I will display the, the Uganda shapefile boundary here. I'll call it Uganda here. Um, and as always, because this is a global, um, you know, data, it will just zoom in to the entire globe. So I'll change this uh, map center object to focus uh, to my study area. So now my script is ready. I'll just go ahead and execute this. So what I'll have is a Sentinel satellite image um, displayed over here. Let's just drag this down so that we have. Okay, cool. So now what we have here is um, the Uganda boundary um, shapefile and Sentinel image is loading now because it's a large database. Uh, it's a huge, um, you know, data. Um, so it's taking a little bit of time. Now loading is complete. So as you can see here, it's a single image, a median value for the entire 2019. And we use the cloud um, masking filter as 20% and less. So the overall image is pretty good, except we have a few spots, um, cloud contamination. So you know, one thing to get, you know, a more perfect um, or clear image is to lower the cloud threshold percentage from 20% to 10% or 5%. And the other, um, you know, approach is to use some more advanced class cloud masking algorithms, which would give you, you know, better or just clearer image. But this is, you know, pretty good as a simple exercise to um, kind of visualize a sentinel image for any country that you're interested uh, uh, in QGIS by using the Erzingen Python API.